The nucleus of atoms contains protons that have a positive charge. We know that positive charges repel, and not just a little bit, but they repel each other a lot. For example, the two protons in the nucleus of a helium atom are repelling each other electrically with a force of about 20 pounds. Yeah, like 20 pounds is in this much. But that force is from two single protons that are about 100,000 times smaller than an atom. So this 20 pounds of force concentrated on the mass of one single proton should instantly accelerate it to around 8,000 miles per second. But they don't. In fact, the protons of atoms are held so tightly together that it's almost impossible to hit them with enough energy to make them fly apart. So what is it then that's holding on to these protons and neutrons so tight in an atom? The force holding them together is called the strong nuclear force. The strong nuclear force is much stronger than the electromagnetic force, and it attracts both protons and neutrons to each other. It's the force that holds the nucleus of all atoms together. When you unleash just a small portion of the energy stored in the strong nuclear force, then the result is a nuclear bomb. But if the nuclear force is so strong, then why doesn't it just pull everything in and make one giant nucleus? Well, it's because it's only attractive at a very short distance. This is a graph of the force between two nucleons. Notice that at more than about 2.5 femtometers, the force drops to zero. That's only 2.5 times 10 to the negative 15 meters. Also, notice that after about 0.8 femtometers, the force is actually repulsive. So the protons and neutrons don't just squish down to a single point because once they get too close together, they actually start repelling each other. So this is an interesting curve here. There's this well that creates a strong binding force that holds the nucleus together, but doesn't let it collapse down into a single point. So what would this look like on a larger scale? Is there a force that holds something in one place and doesn't let it come too close together or too far apart? Is there anything that creates a force field that traps another object? Well, actually, yes. There's a newly discovered phenomenon called polarity-free magnetic repulsion. I did a video on this before, but let me show you my new and improved device created by Hamdi Ukar and his associates. Hamdi is the scientist who pioneered the discovery of this new effect and first described how it works with mathematical precision using classical mechanics. If you just have two repelling magnets, it's inherently unstable and it's impossible to perfectly balance each other without causing one of the magnets to flip. This is called Earnshaw's theorem. You can't have a stable equilibrium with a static magnetic field. But an interesting thing happens when you take a magnet on its end and spin it really fast around 10,000 RPM. A second magnet will actually be attracted to it, but then as it gets closer, it's repelled. So the result is a magnetic trap that levitates it in the air. It can capture it and hold on to the magnets, creating a magnetic potential well. Notice this attraction when it's further away, but then as I try to push it closer, there's a resistance here. And if I push down on it, It goes to higher than the weight of the ball. With the magnet on there, it weighs 3.44 grams. But you can see the resistive force is much higher than that. I can push on it. And it gets to around 5 grams here. 7, 8. I have 9 grams of force. So this provided a repulsive force of 9 grams. If we take a look at Hamdi's paper about this phenomenon, we can get a plot that's very similar to the plot between two nucleons, attractive and then repulsive. So we have a macro scale analogy of the forces inside the nucleus of an atom. And what's really cool is that there's a second magnet on this other side that can hold another magnet over here. So we literally start to assemble a nucleus here. We have two protons with a force holding them together in between. They can't get too close together, but also they're stably held at a distance with a strong binding force. Now keep in mind that this is only an analogy here. The forces that are holding these magnets together can be described using just the electromagnetic forces. But it makes a great analogy for picturing a force that can be attractive, but then also repulsive, creating a stable zone that holds particles together. So let's go over how this device works and then we'll talk about how the strong nuclear force actually works. And before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. These last few years have been difficult for everyone and one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. 
BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable. Whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call, you can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you can get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility at a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab, or you can click the link in the description as well. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the experiment. So as I mentioned, this device is working through the phenomenon called polarity-free magnetic repulsion. To get this to work, you have a magnet rotating with its north and south pole crossing the rotating plane like this. But you have one of the poles of the magnet slightly out of line so that it's sticking out further than the other pole. This is around 7 degrees. See how the magnet is tilted out of this 3D printed case a little bit. So it sticks out a little bit. So the south pole of this magnet is jutting out a little bit more. And then on this other side, the south pole is in a little bit more. So the north pole is sticking out a little bit by 7 degrees on this side, and the south pole is sticking out by 7 degrees on this side. So depending on which side is sticking out more, it'll cause your, it'll cause your floating magnet to be attracted this way or this way. So I put a little white sticker on one end of the magnet so you can see which side is facing it. On this side, you can see the white stickers pointing away from the rotational spin. But then if I go over here, it points towards it. It doesn't matter which way the driving magnet is spinning, it just matters which way it's tilted. Then once it falls into the magnetic trap, neither pole is attracted to the spinning magnet and there's a net repulsive action that doesn't depend on the position and the orientation of the oscillating magnet with respect to the rotating magnet. Once it's attached, in order to stay attracted to the floating magnet, it has to be able to vibrate. If you stop it from vibrating, it gets ejected. So if the driving magnet were not spinning, the floating magnet would just orient itself parallel to the magnetic field and get sucked in. But if you rotate the magnet fast enough, by the time it starts to move to where it was going, you've already swapped the poles. So it begins to chase the wrong pole. So it follows the field by a 180 degree phase shift called phase lag, resulting in an anti-parallel alignment. This isn't possible if the field were static. This effect can be seen by anyone if you have a Dremel or a drill that spins fast and some magnets that you can attach to it like I did in a previous video here. But be careful since these are moving at high RPMs, if you don't get it right the magnets can fly off at high speed. Whoa. So this is a really neat phenomenon that needs to be explored more. It could have some important roles to play in the description of atoms and subatomic particles since they all have magnetic moments as well. What's crazy about this is this phenomenon isn't found in textbooks anywhere because it's so new and it's not widely known. So if you're a student looking for something to study that's a new phenomenon, this is it. I'll put a link to Hamdi's paper in the description so you can learn more about it as well. But the whole reason we are showing this cool phenomenon with magnets was just to show an analogy for the strong nuclear force. Interestingly enough, the strong nuclear force isn't even a fundamental force. It's actually just a residual force of the real fundamental force called the strong force. This is similar to how the van der Waals forces are just residual forces of the electromagnetic force. The strong nuclear force is just the leftover force of the strong force that holds the nucleons themselves together. So the thing that holds protons and neutrons together. Remember that protons and neutrons are made of even smaller particles called quarks. These quarks are attracted to each other through the strong force. Instead of positive and negative charges, the strong force has a property called color charge. And there aren't just two opposing charges, but there are three called red, green, and blue charges. The quarks exchange color properties through the exchange of gluons, just like in the electromagnetic force they exchange photons. This force holding quarks together is extremely strong, over 100 times stronger than the electromagnetic force. 
And unlike the electromagnetic force or gravity, it doesn't get weaker with larger distances. It gets stronger, actually. So that's why you never see single quarks. They always come in groups of two or more. The strong nuclear force comes from the fact that sometimes the color charges become unbalanced in a nucleon. And this forces out a quark that instantly forms a quark-antiquark -quark pair that can exchange gluons with a neighboring nucleon. These quark-antiquark -quark pairs are called mesons, and they can be attractive or repulsive. At close ranges, the omega meson dominates and it's repulsive, but at larger distances, the rho meson dominates and it's attractive. That's why we end up with a curve that's attractive but then repulsive. Now saying all this to you really fast made me realize that I probably need an entire video dedicated to just the strong force and gluons. Also, I should mention that this force curve looks very similar to the London dispersion forces between atoms and molecules. So this could also be used as an analogy for that as well. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.